On today's show, Tesla makes its one millionth electric vehicle, a Tesla Model Y. Deliveries for Model Y begin a few days earlier than originally planned, and Ford takes the Mustang Mark E winter testing to prove that it's got what it takes to survive in cold climates. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and we're 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another Ecotech Roundup show. We're all working from home and if you are too, I want you to know that I feel your pain. But hey, it's better to be safe and healthy than not, right? So Let's make the best of a bad situation and get on with this week's show. We start today with the fantastic news that Tesla has just produced its one millionth electric vehicle, appropriately a Tesla Model Y. Of course, Tesla began its vehicle production way back in 2008 with the Roadster, followed by Model S in 2012, Model X in 2015 and Model 3 in 2017. And with Model Y production well underway, it's not going to be all that long until we see Tesla produce its two millionth EV. Making this kind of volume of production is something that very few automakers have managed to do to date, especially within such a short period of time since their founding. So well done to Elon Musk and each and every one of Tesla's past and current employees. Based on the popular X3, the BMW iX3 electric compact SUV is due to enter into production this year as a 2021 model year car. And while BMW was originally due to launch it as a US market model alongside launches in Asia and Europe, it's now been confirmed that the iX3 won't be coming to North America at all. The reason? It seems BMW isn't sure people will feel the car's range is adequate enough, and with the US government pushing back environmental protections and other governments tightening them, BMW has decided to focus on markets where there's significant pressure on it to make more electric cars. The US loses out, and the rest of the world should benefit from higher volumes of iX3s to buy. Mercedes-Benz has officially updated its Vito commercial vehicle and up to nine seat passenger vehicle for 2020. And that means its all electric eVito variant gets an update too. And while it's meant for fleet rather than private markets, it's well worth a look. It's pretty similar on the outside to its predecessor, but there's now a more powerful charging setup with 11 kilowatts of onboard charging capability, as well as CCS quick charging at power levels of up to 110 kilowatts for the first time. Range from the 90 kilowatt hour battery pack and 150 kilowatt front wheel drivetrain is said to be around 421 kilometers on the WLTP test cycle. Expect pricing to be released soon. With any luck, by the time you start watching this, Tesla will have already begun deliveries of its Model Y. While Tesla had originally planned to start deliveries on March 15th, the day after Pi Day, it appears that Tesla decided to push ahead with things a little early. And initial deliveries have been confirmed in Oregon, Washington State and California. So if you're one of the lucky few to have got your Model Y already, congratulations. If you're elsewhere in the world, I'm afraid you will have a little wait for now. But if Tesla's Model Y rumored production rate is true, then I suspect the wait won't be all that long at all. Fellow Oregonian firm Akimoto has officially delivered a special version of its FUV, that's fun utility vehicle, to the Eugene Springfield Fire Department as part of a pilot project into electric first responder vehicles. Unlike the standard version of the FUV, the special edition called the Rapid Responder is kitted out with its own mini light bar and siren, full complement of emergency lights and radio equipment. It can accommodate two people and has a 100 miles of city range, as well as a top speed of 75 miles per hour. While that might seem a little on the small side, remember this vehicle can travel places that four-wheeled ambulances and fire trucks might not. And this means response times might be better. 
BMW held its official Q4 19 earnings call this week. During the call, BMW executives detailed the company's plans to axe around one half of all of its internal combustion engines. This says BMW was driven by falling profits, which in turn are partly caused by spending more money investing in electric vehicle development, as well as a desire to follow through on its promise to electrify its fleet. In a week where it also cancelled its US launch market plans for the iX3, this may seem like a mixed message, but like so many other automakers, it's worth celebrating when fewer internal combustion engines are made and more electrics are being produced instead. Volkswagen announced this week that it's getting ever closer to its planned summer 2020 launch of the ID3, and it now has 30,000 cars that it will be delivering, quote, almost at once. It seems perhaps that Volkswagen is now so confident it'll get those software updates done in time that it's willing to talk about rollouts. It says that the cost of the ID3, according to its own in-house calculations, will be less expensive for customers than a comparable internal combustion engine model. Using Germany as an example, it says after incentives, the entry-level ID3 will cost less than its current Volkswagen Golf Life, yet offer better performance and lower overall ownership costs. It's something that many electric car owners already know, but it's nice to see Volkswagen use economic costs as part of its marketing campaign for the ID3. It's not due to hit the market until later this year, but Ford has been teasing us this week with footage of its Mustang Mark E undergoing winter testing and having lots of fun in the process. Winter testing is, of course, standard for any new vehicle coming to market. But interestingly, while Ford is planning on offering the Mustang Mark E with rear-wheel drive and all-wheel drive variants, three-quarters of all reservation holders right now are opting for the all-wheel drive variant. While Ford got some serious criticism at the reveal event for making an all-electric SUV with a Mustang nameplate, it seems that the car is certainly growing on customers. Fiat's all-electric Centoventi concept car, which included a modular battery pack design that allowed owners to add more range to their car on a temporary or ad hoc basis by simply slotting in additional battery packs, might actually be coming to market. That's at least according to Auto Express. It talked to Fiat's brand boss, Olivia Francois, and based on the Fiat Panda, they've been told the idea behind the Cento Venti is apparently, quote, not just a flash in the pan. But in order to become a production vehicle, Fiat would have to develop a set of battery swapping service stations to facilitate the rental of batteries for longer distance trips. That's no small feat. Amidst all of the cancellations happening worldwide, our buddies over at Fully Charged Live have, out of an abundance of caution, decided to postpone Fully Charged Live UK 2020 until October this year. While I'm sure many of you are sad that you're not going to get to see Robert and the team, as well as us, in May as originally planned, I can tell you right now that we have absolutely no plans to miss the rescheduled event which will now take place over Halloween weekend. And since my birthday is November 1st, it will also be my birthday weekend. I'll be bringing more info just as soon as we have it. And finally, with more and more countries around the world mandating that electric vehicles make some form of noise when traveling at low speed, we've seen some pretty inventive solutions popping up on social media to tackle the problem but none have been quite as crazy or as interesting and innovative as the active sound control kit being offered by British firm Miltec Sport for Tesla Model 3 customers. Designed to plug and play with the Model 3, the kit allows you to make your Model 3 sound like, well, pretty much any sports car the system has sound samples for, from a Lamborghini to a Ferrari. Not everyone wants an exhaust rumbler, but for those who do, well, I guess it's now available. And on that note, that's your lot for today. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got feedback, please do send it our way. Make sure that you hit the subscription bell so that you know the minute we've put a new episode up. And of course, while you're at it, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? They make it super easy to make the change. And if you do, you will help New Zealand go zero emission long before the government's 2050 zero emission goal.
We'll be making some more fun content for all of you to enjoy next week. But until then, please stay safe, remember to wash your hands and keep healthy. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.